In my last video, I suggested that we take a leaf out of the respective books of Marx and Spencer and Professor Richard Ned Lebeau and not bow to the infantile demands of outrage mobs. And that's certainly what Sam Kennard, the managing director of Kennard's Self Storage, did recently. You see, Sam had the audacity to think for himself and join the advisory board of Advance Australia. That led to a Twitter hashtag campaign of hashtag boycott Kennards starting on November 21st, two days after this story appeared in The Australian and on the same day it was reported on the ABC. Now what is Advance Australia and why did it trigger the offenderati? According to its national director Jared Benedett, Advance Australia is an independent movement of mainstream Australians who are determined to protect, advance and defend mainstream values and freedoms. And they claim they are not aligned to any political party. Also on the advisory board is Morris Newman, former ABC chairman, Sydney Dr David Adler, who's the president of the Australian Jewish Association, free speech advocate Kerry Wakefield, the aforementioned Sam Kennard, and the organisation will be chaired by Queensland businessman James Power. Advance Australia is being billed as a rival to union-backed activist group GetUp. Morris Newman stated, we are in the position of the Battle of Stalingrad. We have retreated to such an extent we need to hold our ground somewhere and start to push back. We have to put our hand up and say we believe in this country. People like GetUp are so well funded. Now in the ABC story on the 21st, GetUp National Director Paul Oosting said in response, Advance Australia is a group of rich white men on a campaign to make themselves richer. They want to work on issues that are in their own self-interest, that are the vested interests of the corporate lobby they represent. And I think that's fairly representative of the views of GetUp and the people that support it. They think judging people by their race and gender is perfectly acceptable. So why wouldn't you want to support an organisation pushing back against that kind of divisive identity politics? Now, after his experience with the keyboard warriors, Sam Kennard put out a series of tweets that sums up this type of activism. This week, my name made the Oz and the ABC 730, because I'm on the advisory board of Advance Australia. Quickly, a small group of nameless keyboard cowards went into a frenzy and conjured a boycott Kennard's hashtag on Twitter. Though the noise they make is disturbing as a business owner, I soon realised they were in their own tiny echo chamber, a Twitter bubble of self-fulfilling rebounding gratification. I ignored them. Nothing was said about my business on Facebook. It was apparent the rest of Australia did not know or care. It is the typical MO of the left. They play the man, not the ball. They lack the ability to articulate a counterpoint on the ideas, so they hit and want to damage. It's weak and cowardly. To anyone in business who believes in freedom, small government and lower taxes, hold your nerve. They're not as important as they think they are. Support what you believe in, advertise where you want, do not cave to their bullying. Well said. As far as boycott campaigns are concerned, it was, to be charitable, piss week. There were about 15 different tweets with the hashtag liked and retweeted a couple of dozen times. I spoke to Sam Kennard briefly by phone and he said in comparison to the attacks from a dozen or so keyboard warriors, he got far more supportive messages via emails and DMs and added about 100 new followers to his Twitter account. Now, the Janet Albrechtson article referred to by Sam Kennard was this article in The Australian titled Wake Up to the Hashtag Assassins. In it, Albrechtson details the origins of online activist group Sleeping Giants and their shamelessly dishonest tactics to bully companies into line with opinions that they approve of. Albrechtson describes them as the online Stasi for the 21st century. They use the basic tenets of identity politics, making wild accusations of racism, misogyny, bigotry, and so on to weaponize social media. Their workplace is mostly Twitter, but sometimes Facebook too. The hashtags, hermits, watch Sky News from 6pm until midnight every day, waiting for a line, a quip, a comment that offends them. They pin directions on their Twitter account, instructing others how to be a giant. Find a fence, tweet a company, and wait for corporate cowards to cave in. Then move to the next target. Albrechtson goes on to outline the various dishonest campaigns they've waged against Sky News by calling for, and in some cases being successful, at getting companies to pull their advertising from Sky. Now, I won't go through them all, but here's a good example of how it works and how it instills fear in those making decisions about associating with their targets like Sky News. Last weekend, sleeping giants Oz aimed tweets at more than two dozen companies, including PlayStation, Qantas, Telstra, Woolworths, National Australia Bank and Procter & Gamble, saying... Can your company confirm that Sky News after 6pm content matches your corporate values? Hashtag ad shame. 
They rely on a junior corporate executive seeing a few tweets and imagining it's a tsunami of opposition from ordinary consumers, like Beck, a junior social media manager from Australia Post who, after reading a few tweets attacking Australia Post for advertising on Sky, tweeted that Sky did not reflect the company's values and ads would be pulled, until more senior people at Australia Post overturned her decision. And of most relevance in all of this is the analysis of the sleeping giant's activity, which shows that they are more like sleeping midgets. Albrookson notes, in-depth research by Sky News Australia using social media monitoring company Brandwatch reveals that fewer than 200 individual accounts make up more than 53% of all tweets in sleeping giant campaigns. Even more telling, more than 70% of those 200 accounts are anonymous. You can't tell if they're real people or fake accounts. Between 21st of July and September 4th, 10 followers of Sleeping Giants Oz contributed 4,500 times to their Twitter feed. That's not a tsunami. That's not even a cricket team of opposition. And that's right. Not surprisingly, as Sam Kennard suggested, this is a small, noisy minority that don't wield any real power, unless, of course, you allow yourself to be duped into thinking their bullying tactics represent a much larger movement which they don't. So if you don't like authoritarian midgets trying to tell you what opinions are acceptable and what causes you're allowed to support, check out Advance Australia by signing up to their email list, links in the comments, and start to push back against the online Stasi. I'll see you next time.